I've dabbled in this topic before, and if you don't mind, allow me to expound on it. First off, depending on how you view the current state of the Vikings may perhaps influence your reaction. If you think they're a step or two away from competing, a quick fix from contention, then of course what I'm about to say will make no sense. I, however, am on the other side. Defensively, they will improve, but the front seven, four question marks, three of them potential red flags. You're going up, if you're contending, you're going up against the juggernaut offensive lines. They're nowhere close to that right now. On offense, a soon-to-be 35-year-old quarterback, which you're likely to move on from after next season, three-fifths away from having a competent offensive line, they're in a competitive rebuild for a reason. They can win games, sure, but there's a gap between that and hoisting the Lombardi Trophy, which the Vikings have never done. So back to the topic at hand. I think it's time that Minnesota trades Daniil Hunter, a premium edge rusher. You can get a first round pick for him at the very least. He'll soon be 29 years old and he's in a contract year. You could elect to give him an extension and give him a pay bump for 2023 or trade him. Those are your two options because he's not going to play on his current deal but his value might not get any higher than what it is right now. And a future first round pick would sure as hell go a lot further helping this team with its goal of eventually winning a Super Bowl compared to what you might get out of Daniil Hunter for the next two or three years. And what I'm saying isn't outlandish. It should be considered universal, the Patriot way. You remember the Patriots when they traded at the time 29-year-old Richard Seymour to the Raiders, they used that first-round pick. What they got from Oakland 2011, they used that first-round pick on Nate Solder. Seven-year starter at left tackle, 2011 all-rookie team, helped the Pats win two titles. Both championships, by the way, after Richard Seymour was already out the league. They sacrificed the now for the later. And for those that think the idea of trading soon-to-be 29-year-old Daniil Hunter in the midst of a competitive rebuild is asinine, let me ask you something. What do the Vikings have to gain by keeping Hunter and letting him close out the last few years of his prime in Minnesota, besides memories? Sound off in the comments section. Say what you want. But the Patriot way is the equivalent of Kenny Rogers the Gambler, but in football usage. And I would say the Vikings are kind of tapping into that. No, you gotta know when to hold them, Justin Jefferson. Know when to fold them, Adam Thielen. Know when to walk away, maybe Kirk Cousins. Know when to run, maybe Daniil Hunter. And if you can get the equivalent of the Bradley Chubb deal in exchange for Hunter, it makes no sense not to trade him at that point. And this is beyond the Caleb Williams dream. Oh, stack up assets to trade up for him next year. Take him out of it. This has to be the priority regardless. And switching up gears, I saw on social media the question of what legend would you add to your current roster? So what Vikings legend would you add to this team right now? Randy Moss, he's my favorite player. But with Jefferson and Addison, I don't know that adding 84 to this team would make that big of an impact compared to what the offense is already expected to do right now. The offensive line, honorable mention here, I think adding Steve Hutchison would be super dope. But for the biggest impact, I'm going to go to defense. And I'm too young and uneducated to know much about this player I unfortunately wasn't able to watch him in real time, but everything I've read on him, the comparison that I draw in today's league is Aaron Donald, Allen Page. Add Allen Page to the defensive line. I'll take my chances with Harrison Phillips and Ja'Kalen Roy next to him. Let's go. Folks, we've got new merch. Captain Saver Kirk, the greatest defender of the Purple's quarterback the world has ever seen. Get your shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, whatever. Link will be provided in the description box of this video. And now it's time for comments. Lucrative says, inconsistent, referring to Marcus Davenport. He's been consistently bad is what you mean. He was drafted as a project and failed. That's why he was a free agent. Why the Vikings spent top dollar on a draft bust is beyond me. Well, to be clear, I have zero expectations for Marcus Davenport. He is one of the potential red flags that I've identified for the front seven. Half a sack last year as an edge rusher is inexcusable. If this were 
an expected contending year for the Minnesota Vikings, I'd say, all right, what's going on here? This is ridiculous, a terrible signing, but it's not. It's a prove it year after next season. I do hate that there is a $7 million dead cap hit after next year, but whatever. It's a prove it year for him. If it works out, great. If not, wash your hands with it and be done. T. Moncrief says, left guard, not bad. It's right guard, but got to give rookie a chance to see what he'd do this year first. Agreed. Ed Ingram was awful last year, but he was a rookie. Let's see what he does in year two. Ezra Cleveland, three seasons out of Boise State. I've seen enough. He's not Pat Elfline bad, but it's bad nonetheless. And lastly, Lake Country Closing Service says, bro, our interior offensive line is a joke. Third in inches was a passing down for us basically the entire year. Yikes. Ingram was a rookie. Okay, fine. But Ezra is not a good guard. I have no idea why they pretend like he is. You bring up a very good point. Look at the Eagles, for example. Third in inches, we're going to power run it. Basically the HB dive on Madden. Fourth in inches, we're going to QB sneak it. Meat and potatoes power football and there's nothing you can do about it. Zone blocking is nice and all when you have space, but when the chains get shorter, and not to steal the line from Al Pacino, I guess I am from any given Sunday, it's a game of inches. When the chains get shorter and you have an offensive line that can literally control the line of scrimmage, that's what extends drives. That's what wins you football games. That's how you contend. 